Well, let's build up on our coverage going into that State of the Nation address tonight. And live in Cape Town is ENCA's Jeremy Maggs. Jeremy, good afternoon. From a budget perspective, a much less understated affair, but no less important uh, this evening in terms of the attention that will be paid to the SONA. Yeah, not, uh, it's, it's worth a lot less, I think, this year than it was in, in, in previous years. Certainly austerity, uh, Cathy, is, is one way of describing it. And uh, we were also discussing a little earlier before you came on air that there tends to be a feeling this time that maybe things are a little bit more subdued this time around. Uh, maybe it's just a personal feeling that I have at the moment, but we'll explore that a little bit later on. About four hours to go, as you say, before the, uh, uh, the flyover by the South African uh, Defence Force, before the 21-gun salute, then the official opening of the uh, 2019 uh, parliamentary uh, year. Just behind me to my left, I can see members of the SANDF band starting to uh, warm up and uh, things will certainly get underway uh, very swiftly uh, after all of uh, that. Um, we have the band, as I say, that is, is busy rehearsing. I could also tell you that our fashion watcher, Craig Jacobs from the Sunday Times, has also arrived on the scene. I've watched him scoping out his fashion prey. So look forward to that one a little bit later on. But let's turn our attention away from fashion and talk about what is going to emerge uh, this afternoon or this evening at uh, 7 o'clock. The Minister of uh, Higher Education, Lady Pando, is with us. Uh, Minister, good afternoon and welcome. How many of these have you done? Oh, gosh, I started in 94, so uh, quite an old hat at this. Quite an old hat, but as hot as it's ever been in Cape Town. Yes, I think it hasn't been this hot before. February and March are yeah. fairly hot uh, in Cape Town, but this is one yeah. of the hottest that I remember. Let's start, if we can, with the Durban University of Technology. Um, you've come out very strongly against the killing on campus. At the same time, we have the sit-in at Wits University. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a, a sense of disquiet again as the 2019 academic year gets underway. Are we going to see more of this on campuses going forward? And if so, what are you doing about it? Well, I certainly hope we're not. Um, we have been speaking to vice chancellors to, you know, exert every effort to engage uh, with the students. We'll also be meeting uh, with the uh, South African Union of Students on uh, Saturday in order to continue uh, deliberations on some of the issues uh, that they've raised. But I hope that uh, we are going to get to a point where there will be stability and uh, that we should not have interference with the academic program. Do you get a sense that the student bodies are prepared to listen to you? They seem to be very I hope that they are. Uh, some are listening. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a few institutions at the moment, and I think we need to nip the issues, uh, address them very quickly, so that we don't have a national spread of, of these projects. How are you going to do that? Well, as I say, talking to the SRCs, resolving those issues that we can, where there are reasonable uh, demands, these must be addressed. We have done as much as uh, we can with respect mm -hmm. to NISFAS. I think we've made many advances and that's been very positive. But uh, with respect to the others, there, mm. there are some uh, that uh, universities mm. can't immediately address. We don't have residence places for all students. No university can accommodate every student. We are building uh, new residence facilities at different campuses throughout the country. So it's a matter of really uh, gathering pace, developing, making progress, but the expectation that immediately we're able to address all the uh, demands is just not right. There's a very bitter and unpleasant irony, though, that we've seen emerging from the Zondo Commission, for instance, uh, this profligacy as far as money uh, is concerned flowing around. And yet, uh, that money, had it not been uh, squandered, could have been used to address the needs of these students. Well, I think corruption always wastes public resources and it's just a disgraceful uh, practice. So I'm glad that the Commission is doing its work and let's really get all those criminals who've been involved in abusing public resources. You admonished students a little earlier this week, I think, when you said that they should rather focus on real concerns. What did you mean by that? Well, I think it's important, uh, Jeremy, that we get the academic program underway. I have said to students that I'm getting inquiries from uh, colleagues throughout the world asking whether the South African degree from our universities is worth the paper. It's written on because they hear of constant stoppages, that we're not having a full academic year. And so that issue of reputation, due to an impression that we're constantly unstable, 
is something that is deeply worrying for me, knowing that we do have quality programs and quality institutions. And that has a cascade effect on investor confidence, for instance, because you know it's often the parents of those students that uh, would be investing the money. Absolutely, it's the parents, but it's the public of South Africa as well. Remember, through public resources, we're providing over 20 billion rand toward ensuring young people whose parents have no means whatsoever are supported. So the public of South Africa is making a significant contribution through its taxes as our parents. And so it is important uh, that we do emphasize. I mean, I, I think as Minister of Education, I can't say keep on with the protests. So where there are legitimate issues, we must address these. But we can't have a, a stoppage of academic programs as a pattern of higher education in South Africa. Are you concerned about an EFF protest in the House this afternoon? If uh, EFF uh, carries on uh, the threat that we've heard in the public domain, I think Parliament should be ready to act because we must have a state of the nation address. Stembele Mbete, one of our resident political commentators this afternoon, you are in the academic world yourself. You've listened to what the minister has to say about addressing concerns, but you're up against the coalface as far as this is concerned. Students are disaffected, aren't they? They're angry, they're upset, they, they perhaps feel that government isn't moving quick enough. Indeed, and I think that you know the kinds of student grievances that we're seeing need to be seen in a broader context, which is that many of the students that we have have had parents who've been uh, retrenched, who've lost jobs because of, uh, of, of the economic downturn, parents who are not uh, receiving increases uh, from, from the jobs that they are in. Let's also remember that there is a, such a disparity in quality within the higher education system. So technically, we have enough places for every uh, student that qualifies and wants to go to a tertiary education uh, institution. However, not all of those institutions are of the same quality. So mm. everybody is trying to get into a certain number of universities. And as the minister has said, they just don't have the capacity, firstly, to hold everybody, but also don't have the capacity to house everyone. And so there really are serious systemic structural challenges within our higher education system that I hope will be addressed because we keep facing these kinds of issues at the beginning of every year and we're seeing universities respond with greater and greater repression uh, and, and, and violence to those grievances and we have the same conversation year in year out but we're not dealing with the structural issues that are getting us here in the first place. Does she have a point? Uh, well we are dealing with the structural issues because with funding this is a new uh, funding uh, framework which we've never had before. The investment in infrastructure is a new investment. Uh, these problems exist throughout the global uh, higher education community and there is no country where students are provided with accommodation, all of them. Where there may be need and where I think we need to have creative responses is with respect to the so-called missing middle those parents who don't earn quite enough but are uh, employed, not enough to pay. But then universities must also look at their own cost structure. And this is where we're working uh, on a framework for the regulation of freeze because the increases have been rather high uh, over the past few years and the costs do tend to be at the higher end. So this is something we must address. And I think the improvement in the uh, subsidy from government to universities and colleges has begun to make a difference and so we can reconsider how we redress and remedy the uh, cost structure of our institutions. In the short term though and uh, to the point that Stambili raised is there is concern about the university sometimes uh, reacting perhaps a little too robustly uh, to the violence well, that we've seen um, on campuses. If, Conversely though, you know, if property is being damaged, if, you know, they have every right to do so. Mm. If cars uh, belonging to the institution are burnt, should the university mm. stand by? Of course there shouldn't be uh, violence. I think security people shouldn't have live ammunition and so on. Uh, but you can't have a situation I experienced two years ago where a new 60 million rand science centre was burnt down to the ground at a university that had not had such a centre before. 
So there are intolerable uh, practices which we should not hide under the carpet to suit the argument for legitimate support to young people who do not have the means uh, through their families to pay for higher education. Um, so yes, absolutely, no violence on both sides, measures that will ensure uh, that protest is allowed but that it is peaceful, and also proactive uh, steps by council as the governing body and executive management led by the vice chancellor to address uh, any problems that there might be. Minister, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Stembili, we'll see you a little bit later on. Our live rolling coverage uh, continues at uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon when my colleagues of William Voko and Michelle Craig take over.